Welcome, everyone. God bless you. We're so excited that you are here with us this morning for a monumental meeting. We believe this to be a historic moment both here in BC and the nation of Canada. 21 days ago on Thursday night, September the 6th, from Grace Chapel in New Westminster, Pastor Dave Carson and I made an official proclamation calling pastors, churches, and Christian people to 21 days of fasting and prayer in view of this morning's reveal. For the last 21 days, prayer meetings have been conducted in municipalities from Victoria to Kamloops. Today is that 21st day. We stand here on behalf of 200 pastors and nearly 1,000 signatories. We are hereby revealing for the first time the West Coast Christian Accord, which in 14 articles provides a biblical statement on the supremacy of Christ, the authority of scripture, salvation, marriage, sexual orientation, and gender identity. We are also issuing a strong public statement and announcing our commitment to stop the teaching of SOGI 123 in our BC schools. We are now ready to reveal these documents. Thank you for joining us on this very important occasion. After much consideration and prayer, today we are releasing the West Coast Christian Accord, a statement signed by more than 200 pastors and Christian leaders, focusing authoritatively on the Bible's teaching on sexuality, marriage, and gender. God's word is true, bringing life, purpose, and hope to all those who hear it and obey it. For far too long, many of us in the evangelical churches throughout Canada have been dismissed, intimidated, bullied, and even threatened because of our biblical worldview regarding human sexuality. A worldview that is not only based on the time-honored truths of the Bible, but is a view protected by Canadian law. Late last year, we as Christian leaders became aware of the SOGI agenda surreptitiously targeting BC schools. At no time were we consulted or asked for any form of input by the Ministry of Education. We also became aware that parents, those duty bound to protect children, were unlawfully omitted from the process in spite of legal requirements concerning the involvement of parents in setting the goals, policies, and educational services for the BC education system. Amen. The depth of our concern escalated massively with the release of SOGI 123. So in response to the appalling record of deliberate Christian exclusion and disregard in matters affecting our children, our communities, and our role in shaping public policy directives. A number of meetings took place over the last six months across the Lower Mainland with Christian pastors. The result of these meetings has brought together more than 200 pastors and Christian leaders and the establishment of a foundational document called the West Coast Christian Accord. The West Coast Christian Accord is comprised of 14 articles designed to summarize, in essence, a biblical worldview, specifically the supremacy of Jesus Christ, salvation, warning of the judgment, human sexuality, and identity, and marriage between a man and a woman. Jesus Christ taught that mankind was created by God in their binary form. Matthew 19.4 states, Have you not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? There is thus both an inherent equality and diversity within this order. Women have value, not only because they are the equal of men, but also because they are different, and that difference is good. Men have value, not only because they are the equal of women, but also because they are different, and that difference, too, is good. Men and women are not interchangeable for this would destroy the beautiful diversity that knits us together and grants us our identity as fully embodied persons. 
As signatories of the West Coast Christian Accord, we are here to declare that we will no longer remain silent, but address any government, corporation, organization, politician, educator, or union that teaches and enforces views that oppose our biblical positions. SOGI and SOGI 123 are not neutral, inclusive, or respectful of our legally protected beliefs, nor those of other religious groups who hold similar views which are also protected by law. At the end of this past school year, an eight-year-old Richmond girl was interviewed in the hallways of her school. She said, a teacher came into my classroom and taught us about Soji. She taught us that if you want to be a girl, you can be a girl. And if you want to be a boy, you can be a boy. Because you can choose to be whatever you want to be. The little girl asked the teacher, why do we have to change? She said, because you can be whatever you want to be. The little girl said, I didn't like hearing that. She said that boys can like pink and purple because color has no gender. Sports have no gender. And then she said, there is no gender. The teacher went on to say that if boys like certain colors, they may want to change and become a girl. The little girl thought, why would you change if nothing has a gender? I don't believe that girls can be boys and that boys can be girls. That teacher failed to respect that little girl's diversity of thought and belief, the belief of her freedom of expression, but rather she imposed and dictated the fear-based sex activist agenda. Clearly, these activists are seeking to change and subvert the culture by indoctrinating young and malleable minds. There are numerous other stories of children that are being similarly traumatized. As ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ, we are here today to say that we are opposed to students being taught lifestyles that the Bible calls sin. The signatories of the accord will not stay silent while the next generation is being destroyed. We will not sit idly by while unclothed girls are forced to change with males for fear of being labeled as hateful. While children are allowed to rename themselves at school as teachers deliberately keep information about children from their parents. While girls are forced to compete in sports against males who have enormous physical advantages. While children are medicalized, sterilized, and mutilated because they may be temporarily uncomfortable with their bodies before they even finish puberty. We will not permit misinformation about biological reality and identity to undermine the teachings of the Christian faith. We will not remain silent as children are brainwashed to reject heterosexuality and embrace gender fluidity, homosexuality, polyamory, pansexuality, bisexuality, and other forms of sexual behaviors. In closing, we will not sacrifice our children to be given over to unhealthy practices that can lead to disease, death, depression, loneliness, confusion, and the loss of their God-given identities. We are calling on courageous pastors and Christian leaders and the faithful followers of Jesus Christ to arise this day and join with us in standing together to protect the hearts, minds, and spirits of the most vulnerable Canadians, our children. We are asking you to do three things today. First, we ask you to visit our website, westcoastchristianaccord.com, 
and include your agreement by your signature. Second, we ask that you would commit to joining us in taking, a, taking specific actions to stop any further teaching and LGBTQ indoctrination being spread through SOGI 123 in our public schools. Third, we ask you to get this message out to as many people as you possibly can today. 1 Peter 4.17 warns us, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begins with us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel of God? May the Lord Jesus have dominion. As Canada's national motto declares, from sea to sea and from the great river to the ends of the earth, Psalm 72.8. God bless Canada.